How are you? I'm well. <laughs> For all of the reasons that I described to you just before we hit record and will not be repeating again, I am exceptionally well. We'll Thank save you. that for the uh, After Dark special <laughs> <laughs> that will be released uh, behind yeah, the yeah, paywall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> $30 a month. <laughs> Only fans. Oh, that's kind of genius. I know. Wow. I am available for mixing and I'll send you my wow. new socks. I mean, on imagine a world where you advertise your services on like somebody has to go on OnlyFans to like buy <laughs> mixing with you. I think that's actually brilliant. I think it is too, actually. All right. I'm gonna tell my assistant that all files have to go through OnlyFans <laughs> accounts now. It's gonna they be only great. like allow like MP3s though or something. Ugh. Perfect. I mean, not that it would Even matter better. these days anyway. Yeah, right. We were talking about earlier, we have to beat these tracks up to such an obnoxious degree for anybody to approve a mix now. <laughs> well, when they're listening on OnlyFans, that's why. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, I love it. Um, what's on your mind? What what's what's been your most recent persistent thought? What keeps you up at nights? What is what's Ooh. really what have you been honing in on recently? Okay. Um, a lot of things. So again, without disclosing too many details, just for context, I'm going through a pretty massive life change right now. Uh, one that is ultimately very positive, but, but you know, requires a certain amount of postmortem and, and evaluation and self-reflection and, and all of that. And... Um, I think for me personally, I am realizing that I've been a people pleaser mm. and I am learning that all of these buzzwords that I used to roll my eyes at <laughs> when I see people posting endlessly <laughs> on social media, when you see all those inspirational, you better believe it. I I'm lapping that shit up right now. And <laughs> I'm listening to self-help books, like good ones, yeah, fun ones. I don't want to lack. No, I mean that, like no, I've, you should. They're ridiculous. They're, no, but they're not all. Like, I think they serve a purpose, but continue. Yeah. And it's like all pop psychology <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's not sure. like none of these people are actual <laughs> experts. They, they've got a book deal and they've got a yeah. good point of view. And half the time I, I think they're full of shit, but... Um, the thing that I've kind of been thinking about, the stuff that's been keeping me up at night, as you asked, is um, focusing on whether it's working on a record or being out to dinner with somebody or meeting a new friend or whatever. When it comes to relationships, personal, professional, and otherwise is thinking less about how the other person feels and really paying attention to how I'm feeling in mm -hmm. that moment. And I think that, especially in the context of what we do for a living, so much of the customer service part of my professional life bled into my personal life mm -hmm. in a way that I was completely unaware of. Mm -hmm. So I have been staying up late at night thinking about how to be more aware of how any situation is making me feel on just a baseline. Is this good? Mm. Am I happy to be here right now? How Would I rather right be somewhere else? How do you feel right now? Where would you rather be right now? I got to do the thing that I do after <laughs> any of these situations. Okay, so I'm going to go inside. I'm going to go to my happy place. Is it better or worse than here? Oh, uh, we have a happy place we check with. <laughs> That's Magic City in Atlanta. Uh, uh, what book did we get this one from? I, this one actually was more an amalgamation of, of just some really good advice I've gotten from friends over the last like yeah. several months. And uh, no, so so it's it's it, I know that's really amorphous and and without a lot of detail and context probably doesn't mean a whole lot to anybody else. But yeah, just the the simple idea of valuing my own experience no, in a I think, moment. I think that's important. I mean, as I much think, as somebody else's, not to dismiss what somebody else is feeling. Well, I, I still want to be conscious of that, but caring as much about how I feel as how somebody else feels. That's like a, yeah. a big kind of revolutionary idea for me right now. And, mm. and, I think it's an important yeah. one though. I mean, I think to bring it into like terms of what we do, that is important, right? Because, I mean, we're service providers at the end of the day, right? Whether we're producers or engineers or mastery engineers, like whatever kind of 
amalgamation you want to put on what we do right or anybody does in what the music industry is like we're service providers at the end of the day um and we're in a support role sure support role that's a good way of putting it yeah Yeah. uh so you have to be conscious like in those moments it really doesn't air quotes depend how you feel right like you know i mean i've waited tables for years like doesn't care how you feel like you need the customers always right you know uh so that's that's a hard thing like you're saying to detach from that back into your real life sometimes i think um but I will say, I think there's got to be a healthier relationship with that in music as well, I think, because what value do you bring as a creative? Um, yes, your support role, but you're still making creative decisions, right? And what value do you bring when you're belittling your own joy and happiness so much? just to please another person like you you become such a shell that you're not even available to make creative decisions i think i think a lot of people who find themselves doing something like what we do for a living Mm -hmm. where we are supporting a another creative effectively Mm -hmm. right and trying to help them um make something that feels vital and real and current and functionally important for them to have made. Yeah. Right. Um, I think for a lot of us that find ourselves in those roles, especially in our earlier stages of our careers, I think there's an idea that, that you have to earn the right Mm. to have an opinion that is, yeah equal or more weighted than the person or artist or whatever that you're supporting. And so for me, the way that's manifested in the last, I'd say, year or so um, has been in my pivot to doing a lot more songwriting sessions. Mm -hmm. Like when we're mixing records, at the end of the day, somebody or a group of people have already signed off and said, we yeah. like this. It's done. We think Flocked, this is, we think this yeah. is rad. Yeah. And you go see if you can fish out five to 10 more percent or yeah. clean up because we're yeah. messy. You're finishing. Right. Right. Finishing. And I do think with mixing, it, it, it is important to maintain that point of view. If you can bring value to it and add your opinion to it in a way that is harmonious with the, intention behind a record um as it comes to you then cool but so small but right but with songwriting and (laughs) um you know so my background i think we've talked about this before but but i was in bands and that was my entry into this whole thing and i sang in my bands and i wrote the songs and my approach to songwriting was go get myself hurt as hell and then <laughs> run around with a metaphorical butterfly net and and wait yeah. until the song comes to me it didn't feel like a craft it felt like an antenna that i had and mm. that antenna was incredibly unreliable but when it worked mm. it felt divine um and i kind of got out of the the songwriting world when the production and the engineering and the mixing stuff started actually being able to pay my bills. I went, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> doubling down on that. Who needs a royalty check when yeah, you can yeah. just charge people <laughs> yes. for yeah. the work, right? And it's in the last year that I've gone back into approaching the records that I want to make in the writing room. Using that as kind of my entry point yeah. into finding people I want to collaborate with. Yeah. And it wasn't my idea. It was my manager's idea. And at first I was really uncomfortable with it because number one, I hate a blank piece of paper. Mm. I'm real good at telling people what is already on the paper, what's good about it, what, what isn't yeah. good about well, it. It's a whole new, but man, the, yeah. the, the blank sheet of paper thing freaked me out until I started doing it in, in consistent bursts. <laughs> so the, the, thing that I figured out that relates back to what we were talking about, this long arc I've tried to make for this point, is that once my muscle came back online in the writing room, 
and it stopped feeling anxious and difficult to sit mm-hmm. down and try to write a song with somebody that I'd just met an hour earlier. Yeah. This kind of grand, simple, should be obvious epiphany popped into my head and I realized how much easier it is to write your way out of a problem than it is to produce your way out of a problem. Mm. You know, you ever yeah. have that record where like, whether you're producing or mixing, yeah. you, you know, it's cool. It's got something it's, it's, it, there's definitely a, a, a vibe that's running through it or the sentiment is obviously ugh, really electric. But the chorus comes and it's just like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And then you got to start automating all kinds of crazy sh- uh, stuff and, and try to like, produce or mix your way into it being good. And it's amazing how, if you can trust yourself in the writing room and value your own opinion as much as the person that you're there to support, how much easier it is to write your way out of it. This chorus isn't working. Yeah. Let's write another one. So do you and think- being you know, bold with your opinions. And yeah. that's, I think to wrap it in a bow. Yeah. I, go. I think a lot of us, feel like we have to summit some great mountain in terms of accolades or credits or whatever before we're even allowed Mm. to say, hey, I see where we're going. I don't think what we have right now is doing that thing. We should write a different chorus. So the metaphor, Mm. like interpersonal business, whatever, don't let a bad chorus get past you. That's what I keep telling myself. If I know it's not a good chorus. Okay, but so this comes to two things, which the first thing I wanted to interrupt you with was, do you think because you've finished records for so long, it informs and helps you with the blank piece of paper now, or do you think it hinders? But then to go back to the other point, which I mean, this is a lot of trails on this conversation. Do you think what you just said that, yeah, you shouldn't let a bad chorus go without you saying something, but does every person have the right to know that it's a bad chorus? Yes. You've, you've, you've heard way more choruses than Timmy, who's brand new starting out 18 here in Nashville, starting in Belmont. Sure. Right. Sure. So like you think it's still in Timmy's best interest to speak up in a room with people who maybe have a better say yes. to say, yes, that's nah, not it. Yes. Trust, trust the gut no matter what. Yes. And, <clears throat> but, but it's all predicated on something. Yeah. Right. You got to have taste. That's fair. If your taste sucks <laughs> and you stick your neck out there, that's you're going to look silly. But frankly, like this is, this is a kind of the point is that the idea that you have to earn the right to have an opinion that is relative to your own taste Mm-hmm. I think fundamentally comes from an insecurity that you don't have good taste. Well, and if think, you're doing this, then what you have to offer, it's not technical skills. It's not, you know, the way you play an instrument, you could be amazing on a functional technical level, but if you don't have mm-hmm. good taste, mm. none of that matters. So if we're going to do this, then you got to at least be ballsy enough to say, I trust that I have good taste Yeah, and skip the part where you think that your good taste isn't as valuable as somebody else's, you know, good taste in the room. I think the people that, that don't get insecure the way I'm describing are the people that end up being those like 19 and 20 and 23 year old breakout producers and songwriters. Yeah. Cause they're not wasting any time doubting themselves, but they I didn't think, wait but for I think permission. there's a level that like, I'm not disagreeing with you. And those kids normally do have good taste, right? I mean, I know tons of people half my age who are making I'm I'm learning everything that's cool <laughs> yeah, like from so people under twenty five. Just right because now. their taste is insane. But like but I think those people are the ones to be in a room and go like, No, 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 that course isn't it. This is it. Like I don't think you could just sit and say like no that's not the thing and then not present a different option. You well, that, that you have to have an option. That's what I mean. You can't just yes. you, you have to, and that's where the taste comes in. Like you have to put the taste in the practice and go yeah, like the craft and the taste. Yeah, those are the two yeah. combinations. Uh, so you, the, the you still combination. need the like reps 
into it to some extent. I oh, think. for sure. Yeah. Like, Cause like I was, the... like I was saying before the idea of like my songwriting process when I was 21 was running around with a butterfly gotcha, net, just say. hoping to yeah. catch something, just hoping that the antenna would receive a download. So 21, we're 21 year old. You would sit in the room and go, oh, that's not it, but I don't, I haven't caught it yet either. Oh, dude, I'd spend six months on a yeah. song, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and Sometimes that still happens. I don't think there's any one way to do it, but the idea of song craft, especially if you live in a music city, especially if your job is to go into sessions and in four or five hours come out with a song. Yeah. That that's where the craft piece comes in. But yeah. and that part, yes, that the reps over whether I was producing a record or mixing a record or whatever, it all builds that muscle, the craft, right? And yeah. the relationship oh, yeah. with formula, right? Which I think is usually a dirty word for a lot of people that are maybe earlier in their creative yeah. journey. And um, I, I think formula serves as a control in a creative experiment. Okay, it's interesting. We know that a formula, whether it be a song structure mm. or the formula that all of us as mixers have in terms of what we think the... Um, distribution of of energy on the frequency spectrum, like and mm. we all have our preferences. I love this um, riff right now. Keep going. I know I, where you're going with it. I think um, that. Holy shit! I just lost my train of thought. Formula uh, is is a is a is a standard. Yeah. To, okay. To, yes. Formula. <clears throat> so it's a it's a control control. Yeah. And you use it as a way of evaluating what you're doing. Like if the formulaic way is better than whatever like wild thing you're chasing down <laughs> is, yeah. then just fit your wild idea into a formula and you've got the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And if you're stuck and you just don't know where to go, you can use formula as a way to get unstuck. Yeah. Like, like being formulaic or being totally original are not binary opposites. They are states and you can phase between yeah. states. So having an appreciation and a respect and a knowledge of formula and why it works, yeah. whether it be like starting the chorus on the one, knowing that if you end your pre-chorus on whatever yeah. interval, that it's going to make that one feel really, really yeah. satisfying. Then when you know that you want to deviate from that, when you want to manipulate the way somebody feels listening to the song in a way that isn't that easy satisfaction, you've got that control. Yeah. You know, you have that calibration point. It's, it's, you have to learn the rules before you can break them type thing. Right. Like, I mean, that's what everybody yes. kind of says. It's that's like, a much better way of putting it than yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I love your idea though, because I mean, I think in songwriting specifically, it's talked about so much like formula. Uh, I hate the songwriting form. It's the thing. And it's, it's a dirty word, like you were saying, you know, and I think, I, find I think that thinking about it in that way though, is such an interesting concept of like, yeah, you know, the formula, feel free to do whatever you want. But yeah. when, 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 what, you are doing doesn't seem to work like rain in the formula or if the formula is boring, rain it out of the formula. Well, like, and, and you just said boring. <clears throat> That's the, the idea of contrast to me is critical to songwriting, to production, to mixing. Like if you've got something really interesting happening in a song and you're trying to figure yeah. out how to, Build on it. Like, let's say you've gotten through a verse and a pre, and you can feel the tension you've built, and you're ready for that chorus, and you're not quite sure where to go. Use the formula of contrast. If your verse is super wordy, yeah. If you are subdividing your phrasing like crazy, then if you're not sure where to start, start with a long held sustained note, go yeah. full, see a chandelier on it and just see if you're getting the energetic connection, if you're making good on that tension and then you can like mess around with it and play with it. But the balance of novelty and <clears throat> newness, right? It works best when you offer relief 
Like, I don't want to listen to a four-minute song that is completely avant-garde from top to bottom. Yeah. But you give me an avant-garde approach to a chorus or to a verse, and then you balance it with something that feels very easy to settle into, something that feels like I've earned something by the time I get to the next section. Yeah. That's formulaic, but it ultimately leads to something really interesting reaching people that if you'd been just, you know, so rigid about not following a formula, it, it, you get what I'm saying. Like yeah, basically no, no, like no, don't yeah, be a curmudgeon and well, people who just want to follow the rules too much. I think to some extent, like or there's, who there's think a, that following the rules ever is a sin. That's correct. Yeah, creatively that's the polar opposite of it. Yeah. Balance. 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 I, that was, a, that was a, that was a key word in my life for a while. I needed balance. Uh, I think a lot of people probably think that or need that. Yeah. Um, what are you most scared of? Mm. It's a big one. Yeah. And I'm getting, I'm getting there. Um, you had to go to your happy place. <laughs> no, honestly, I had, to, I had to go to my like really sad, scared, oh, insecure dark. place, which cool. is somewhere I've I've become adept at like suppressing through brute force when yeah. necessary. Um, I think I think I'm scared of missing the point missing the point on a grand scale. Like when it comes to life design, mm. right? Like when it comes to, you know, we always hear the trope of nobody said on their deathbed that they wish they'd worked more. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe those people didn't make records because <laughs> I will be deeply disappointed if I didn't make the records I wanted to make. Right. Wow. That's, and, <laughs> and, that's good. um, I'm, when I say I'm scared of missing the point, I think what well, begs the question, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta lay that one down first. Well, I think the point that I'm referring to is like <clears throat> making sure that we live well. Hmm. And I don't mean that in terms of like, personal finance, although that's a component or, uh, health and fitness, although that's a component like, or job satisfaction or relational satisfaction or anything like that. Like this is going to sound so strange, but I think a lot about civilizations before our bizarre time in, in, in history, like the where, Roman empire. <laughs> I think about the Roman Empire all the time. I'm thinking about it right now. I would look so good in one of those metal skirts. Um, I was hoping that was a TikTok thing that would land. It would make my calves pop, those weird sandals they wore. I, I um, derailed the thing. It was too good. But yeah. keep going. Um, but no, I think to like when the human experience was so much less granular and transient, and it was so much more just functionally simple. You got to eat. Yeah. You got to have shelter. Yeah. You got to have water. You know, like, yeah. like your existence was yeah. built around functional and basic survival. And then whatever developed outside of those basic needs um, was like a bonus. Yeah. And the world we live in now is. God, everybody's got to be famous. It's yeah. everybody's got to be the main character. Everybody is struggling. Or not everybody. I'm painting with a very broad brush, but it does feel like we're living in a time where, like, we are at odds with what makes us human. Yeah, because the world has become so full of whether they're real or just perceived options. We have to make Ooh. so many options, more choices. Mm. every single day. And then we judge ourselves 
for not making the right decision or not being ambitious enough or being mm. too ambitious and coming out of balance with our personal relationships or whatever. Like when I say missing the point, I feel like I don't even know how to put words to what the point is, but I bet somebody that had to build their shelter with their own yeah. hands yeah. and hunt for the meal and run from a predator. Well, I bet that person knew what the point was. Did you read the book Sapiens? No, you should read the book. You would like it. It's, you know, just on the evolution of humanity, basically, okay. of like where we came from and whatnot. And it's crazy, but it is, it, it, it goes into that, which I think about a lot too, because it, like, we were never meant, and what the book talks about a lot, and is kind of a profound thing to think about is like, we were, we were designed as human beings in our whatever functional form to be hunter gatherers. Like, we were sure. never, so when we switched over to this, like, I forget, har like we harvest now, right? Like we have farms. Yeah, and we agricultural. Don't, we don't, yeah, the agricultural yeah. revolution. Like, yeah. It changed our like wiring. Like we weren't ever evolutionized necessarily to do that, right? And it changes your whole <clears throat> um, thing that you're talking about where it's the yeah. whole like like hierarchy of needs, really. It, it's It's almost as if our our intellect as individuals to imagine something beyond survival mm -hmm. and meeting yeah. our basic needs exceeded the mandate that our bodies yes and that why do you why do you think our, our like souls that like like it, why do you think mental health is such a big thing right now like i say this like and i think it's catching up with our generation specifically oh, a lot because for sure like i mean i still say you know, why didn't our parents ever talk about mental health or this or that? And like, maybe it's a buzzword. I don't know. And like, we're shamed into it sometimes. I think of like, oh, mental health, blah, blah, blah. But like, it's because I think we're still coming out of it even then. Like, our parents even, you know, their parents lived through the Great Depression. And, and I look at my parents and like, they still were like very much working class people to provide for the life that I have. And I think we now are the first sort of generation to really come out of it and go like, Oh yeah, I haven't really ever like I work, but I've never really had to like struggle to work. You know, things uh, have always I, been provided, dude, and that's not true I, for everybody. Of course, it's not true for everybody. Of and that's course, like a but, I, but, but my I do. Point being, our generation, I think, is the first to really start feeling the benefits of what you're talking about. Where, yeah, I mean, lots I, provided. I, I joke with a lot of my close friends that you know, some people, it's very obvious. It's been way too long since they've had to run from a predator. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, look at we're, me, man. We're, all, we're all guilty of it. Right. I get, like I gasp walking up the steps in my house. Well, I'm not even like just on a physical, yeah. like, like not even our bodies so much Yeah, as just what it is that we, especially here in the West and yeah, well, in, a, in the United States, you know, where our single biggest export is ideas and culture. <laughs> Right, we don't make things anymore. We yeah. make ideas. We make, um, we make cool. We make cool. Wow, that's what we export. That's what we've been exporting since the '60s. America mm -hmm. manufactures and distributes cool. <laughs> now, I don't think that makes us the coolest, but but functionally, it feels like our society has gotten so good at not dying randomly because a tree falls on you that you were trying to cut down to build your shelter mm. or, or a predator came out of nowhere and took you down or you drank from the wrong stream. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've gotten so good at not dying Ooh. that we've redefined what a good life is in the affirmative as opposed to like, not dying or preventing somebody we care about or our community yeah. from facing a lack of resources or, or whatever. We've gotten so spoiled that we get unhappy when we don't get to do exactly what we want to do. Mm -hmm. When, yeah. when we, when, when things are unfair, that our whole idea of fairness like, you know what's unfair? <laughs> yeah. What's unfair is that you and me can sit here and drink beers 
while some people can't even find clean water. Like that's yeah, unfair. I mean, yeah. If I, I don't mean, achieve my career goals, yeah, right. That's not unfair on a on a like celestial level. It yeah. doesn't even suck. It's just so so to back up because I'm getting really kind of into the weeds. Yeah, I was going to bring it back. But what, my, so then, what is the point? So the point missing the point uh, for me, and and I don't again, I don't have the words to describe what the point is, but the way it feels is trying to strike a balance between being an enthusiastic ambitious participant in the world that we've been born into an advanced world where there are significantly fewer everyday risks to our mortality. Mm -hmm. So we get to actually think about life in terms of ambition and in terms of goals and in terms of, of pie in the sky dreams. Like, you know, when I was 17, it was being Bono, you know, (laughs) Now I just want to have my own signature plug-in at some point. Like that's, <laughs> man, you know, but, but, but the point to me, it, it feels like I don't want to be one of those people that is happy to just sort of like sit around and revel in their humanity. And, and I'm not mm. saying that to be critical of people that are that. Frankly, they are more enlightened and probably more satisfied on a daily basis than I am. I have the ambition bone. I can't help it. Mm-hmm. But how to square that and balance it with like whatever made our primitive ancestors smile. Yeah. Yeah. How right. do I connect? <laughs> with, how do you get back to that? How do I get, do back, get back to, to being that? able to have a terrible season yeah. where I barely ate because the migration patterns had shifted or I broke <laughs> my foot so I couldn't yeah. hunt. Right. Like yeah. how do I get the more in winter, touch yeah. <laughs> with the fact that, you know, I wasn't there, but my guess is that even the most challenged ancestors of ours still managed to find something to laugh about and to be happy about and to be grateful for. Yeah. And we have it so much better now and we get so caught up yeah. in oh, yeah. shit that is fundamentally not required for <laughs> us to be happy. What was it that made them happy? We've in, lost touch. So yes. Much. We've, yeah, lost we've lost touch. So much touch. Like there with... is there. I, I just, I, again, I don't have words for it, but I just know, I know there is a, a baseline home for our hearts and for our minds and for our spirits and our world that we're living in right now. And the mental health stuff that you talked about should be perfect evidence of how far yeah. we've gotten from what that like fundamental home for our hearts are. And, and I'm, I'm not religious. So this is like a, a little bit of a, I'm sure there are people that are part of faith traditions that would tell me that the answer to my question is God. Okay. And I'm not saying I disagree with them. It's just, for me, it's it's a much more human thing. I I don't think I, I think Why? it could be as simple as a full stomach at the end of a day. That made somebody way happier than even the greatest accomplishing moment I'll have in my life might make me. So yeah. that's when I say the point. It's about trying to figure out where is that like pure human satisfaction and how can i balance that with my modern i think the problem existence? i think the problem to push back is we're we're learning <laughs> wow not to get spiritual with you but please i think we're learning that there is no core human satisfaction because if you're telling me that it's just food in my belly right we turn it into gluts right now we have in excess of food and we just can't eat enough. And now we have an obesity problem. Or if you're telling me it's whatever it may be, right? Like, like, great. You have that as a baseline. Now, now what do you do? Oh, you overdo it or you chase the next thing. Like, like, I think that's what led to the mental health thing. So my pushback would be if it's not, and I don't want to do the spiritual thing, but like, go for it. No, I'm not. But like, 
if it's not an earthly, like if it's not a human satisfaction thing, because we have everything in excess now and we're the most unhappy we've ever been. Like if you're telling me that like before when you had just a little bit of rice, you were like happy and now you have an excess of rice and you're unhappy. Uh, yes. Like but, what's but the see, pushback to that? But see, but see the happiness <clears throat> is that, moderation would be your thing. No, because you didn't need moderation when you had scarcity. So when, when, scarcity is the answer? Not scarcity in the sense that we should like self-impose austerity on ourselves. But I do think at some point, especially in the West, where we are so unbelievably spoiled. So discipline is the answer. Maybe. But even discipline. I wouldn't disagree with but that. Even, but, but even discipline becomes this sort of like self-indulgent correct. thing. You know what I mean? So like, where like, does the point? That, that, elsewhere other than, so, than spiritual and God so is what well, I'm getting at. Welcome to the thing I'm describing as the thing that I'm most afraid of is that you're most afraid of God. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, this got crazy. No. I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm afraid of the idea that I may not be living through a time in human history where we really are even capable of achieving that balance on mm. any kind of sustainable and relatively well distributed level. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I, I know there are happy people. I mean, it, it, let me back up. I'm happy. I'm a yeah. really happy person. Sure. Yeah. And, and in general, I'm, I think more comfortable with the dichotomy of being deeply ambitious in a highly competitive field mm -hmm. and comfortable with the idea that the ultimate joy quotient of my life is not dependent on me making good on these things that I'm ambitious about. Somehow I, I can mm -hmm. be of two minds, sure. but I can't help but find myself thinking about that balance beyond myself because mm. I don't think the world we live in encourages people to prioritize joy in any way that is sustainable. It's mm. it's joy is a quick yeah. hit of dopamine. Yes. You know? I mean, Happiness that's... is a warm gun and joy is a quick hit of dopamine when you scroll <laughs> through your phone. Right. Or yeah. when you eat that fast food or when you take a selfie at the gym where you're not even as focused on, on yeah. working out as I you mean, are and all, demonstrating that you're a person who works out like the whole world. So we're all for sure. I mean, all is a broad picture, but like 98% of us are dope addicts. Like, Oh, I fully am. I will admit to it as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's, lies a lot of the issue too but i mean it still comes back to the whole thing but um mm, those are your thoughts i like that i i just i just i'm i and i'm not gonna keep harping on this because i think there are <laughs> no, other no, no, other skip. interesting things we can talk about and this isn't the joe rogan show you know what i mean like <laughs> like or is it well if spotify wants to give me whatever hundreds of millions they gave him <laughs> to go like this on screen <laughs> then i'll take it but um, you want to talk about aliens next? Do you think they're aliens? Okay. Should we just go? Should we just go for it? I, it wasn't a thought in my mind until right now, but let's go. Um, I don't have any real opinions. So well, actually, yeah, I, guess I don't, I do, I don't but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you have a very formulated opinion, apparently. <laughs> not it's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's particularly controversial or even that interesting, but here's where I'm at. I'm ready. I th So I went to space camp three times when I was a kid. Space camp once, Space Academy twice, got kicked out the third time. Okay. I'll so tell you, you that story off camera. <laughs> um, so you were a space cadet to begin with. Oh, dude. I Before I wanted fan. to do anything to do with music, I was 100% convinced I was meant to be an astronaut. Oh, nice. Yeah. You I want to, I, I've never had any sort of reasonable ambition. God. The fact that I can even wake up in the morning <laughs> and smile... I've never, never wanted reason. to do anything that would just be like easy. Yeah. Like why couldn't I just want to be one of these things where there's a, a, a hierarchy and a, and a 
worn path and and reasonable metrics that you can t- anyway that's another conversation but uh, the whole alien thing here's where i'm at and this is part of why i'm not part of a faith tradition okay, okay? i think we are limited to such a degree by the senses that we can perceive mm-hmm. that I just don't think there's any way for us to even begin to quantify what exists beyond what we can see, touch, yeah, taste, smell, yeah. whatever. Like beyond our senses here. Yeah. I mean, obviously we are music people. Um, beyond our senses, I believe lies potentially nothing and also potentially yeah. I- infinity. Right. And yeah. the idea that consciousness only exists in the form that we can imagine it immediately limits the possibility of there being other forms of experience and of self identification. Right. So when it comes to the alien stuff, and when I hear people talk about, you know, UAVs or UA, UO, UFOs, whatever they're calling them now. I know they come up with different <laughs> terms for them. Whatever Congress just decided to disclose. Like, I, I'm not a doubter. Yeah. I have no problem acknowledging that there's something sure. that does not fit within our ability to understand it. Mm-hmm. And yet we can observe it. Mm-hmm. We can observe our inability to understand it. I don't have a problem with that. Gotcha. I do not need to explain it away. I don't need to tell somebody it was a weather balloon. Yeah, They saw some shit. And yeah. we can't describe yeah. what it is. And I'm okay with that. I'm fine with I'm gonna that. Walk I have, away I have not, no yeah. I have no need hmm. to know the secrets of the universe more than somebody else. But uh, there's this movie, uh, Contact, that I really love. Have you ever seen Contact? No, I don't think so. It's got Matthew McConaughey um, and Jodie Foster. I'm not a movie um, guy. And, and there's actually this one really great scene. So they're like SETI researchers. They're alien researchers. They are <laughs> scanning the universe for radio signals, basically. Nice. And when they finally receive this like, first alien signal, there's a piece of gear next to them in a rack that they keep touching and turning the knob on. Uh, you know what it is? I've seen. This has been like a meme on the internet yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's like an yeah. Eventide H3000 yeah, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. right? Been a meme. Like it's, yeah. like, it's like it was actually yeah. made to make David Bowie's voice sound like there were four <laughs> of them. And in this movie, it was actually receiving alien signals. But um, I remember this line from that movie. I, I can't remember if it was a Carl Sagan quote or if it was just a really well-written line. I think McConaughey said it. You know, he said it in a way that was profound, right? That, you know, if there's nothing out there, it seems like a terrible waste of space. Mm. And and I have absolutely no expectation that in my lifetime or probably in the history of humankind before we meet our end, however we do, it will develop the technology that allows us to travel far enough yeah. to really explore that, like just by the numbers idea that yeah. there's so much out there yeah. that statistically it's likely there's another place that mm-hmm. has replicated earth in terms of its <laughs> origins. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, it's one of those things I just chalk up and go probably, Yeah, but it doesn't feel like a good use of my time on this planet because, yeah. cause it just seems yeah. so unfathomably beyond us. Mm. Like who knows, maybe, maybe whatever other life exists, exists on a, a quantum scale. Yeah. yeah. You know well, what I mean? That thing. we can't even communicate with, well, let alone yeah, be aware we, of. Yeah. That we can't even, I mean, that's, maybe that's what ghosts are. Who yeah. knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I just try to remain curious and open. Somebody and, asked that to like Elon Musk or, somebody that I've heard once like, do you believe in aliens? He's like, well, you have to define your idea of alien. Cause if you're talking like on a like molecular level, like, yes, they're proven all over the place and whatnot, you know, but if you're talking like yeah. some green person with like six fingers and a like strange shaped head, then it's a different conversation. Well, so I think, and that's, that's yeah. one of the fundamental flaws I think with, with so many man made theoretical disciplines perceptions that we, we of it, can't yeah. imagine much yeah. beyond Perhaps. ourselves what we can perceive right yeah and what's been fed to us for so long sure right like 
sure. what's been truly like you know we've been brainwashed it's sure. the same thing with just phones and media and sure. tiktok and but but i think to to put a bow on that like i i don't have any interest in being a contrarian I mm. don't have any interest in telling somebody I don't know, but I also know you don't know. You know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah, know exactly yeah. the type I'm talking about, right? Like, like yeah. they want to talk somebody out of an opinion they have. Yeah. But they don't have one of their own. They don't have own. any strong place. Yeah, I take I just the half of it that says, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And I remain curious. And, and I there's remain nothing you can open. do about it. That's the that's, thing. That's right. I take that stance on a lot of things, which maybe can be portrayed as apathetic to some extent i think but like i don't know i can't do much about it so like i just kind of don't keep up with it like, hey man there there are forces of nature that we can observe in our own world yeah. to get back to earth like we know erosion is a thing <laughs> right like we know that yeah. over the course of hundreds of thousands of millions of years water simply running past a rock yeah will change its shape and there's very little we can do to defeat forces of nature. We yeah. can mitigate, we can avoid, we can hide out, we can whatever. But when it comes to these like really heady concepts about like the nature of life and what else is out there and all of that, that to me is a force of nature, yeah. right? That we can't understand. And and I don't want, I don't I just don't have any interest in telling somebody that whatever musing they have about it is wrong. Yeah. I, I just try to remain open and, and, yeah. you know, I'm still skeptical as hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I mean, you and I are the same in that. I mean, I yeah. love a good conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat, like, sure. It's I entertaining. love exploring all options and, and that it's entertaining. My, you know, skepticism, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, no, you're right. And all that. Yeah, and I mean, it's like there are these fundamental ideas of like Occam's razor, right? Like the the simplest explanation for anything is sure. almost certainly the most likely to be true, or the trope of like, you know, never attribute malevolence where incompetence <laughs> could yeah create the same result, yeah. right? Like I don't believe in evil geniuses that are manipulating the world. I believe in tech companies that created something that people want and it generates a huge amount of profit mm -hmm. and didn't think about the effect it would have. I don't I, like, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's about Illuminati versus just us stumbling into the future, like a couple of like cosmic teenagers and, and, and just not knowing what we're getting into. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, 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 it's just, accidental. I, and then sure. going like, oh, now what? And just keeping your head yeah. above. Yeah. So, so to like circle back to music, like, this is why, for me, when we hear about these trends of records getting louder and louder, hmm. or like what we were talking about before we got on camera about, mm -hmm. like, how young producers and writers and artists are doing all these crazy things in Logic and in Ableton and whatever they're working yeah. in, or in GarageBand or on their iPad, and yep. then, and then it, it, iPad, if, yeah. if it connects culturally, it, it inevitably ends up with someone like us, right? Like we're sort of the the intermediates between the raw genius, yeah, and the commercial world, right? Mm. Like, and I'm not saying that that means we deserve that. Like, mm. I don't think that we make brilliant young kids who don't know what they're doing more brilliant by filtering them through our rules. Right, I our do. gain stage. I'm just kidding. Sure, I'm just kidding. but that's my point. <laughs> no, is that yeah, yeah. is that I? I don't know when it happened, but I get excited when shit feels um, heretical. Like when mm. somebody breaks a rule that to me makes me go like, "How could you?" do that heretical wow uh, maybe that's the wrong word i'm no, basically no, no, trying no. to say Keep heresy like yeah. like like yeah. a sin right yeah. yeah you know like when i get a vocal that's been processed to hell and mm. back and the breaths sound like they've been <laughs> like breathing through a fan <laughs> which you and i both know is what happens when somebody uses melodyne indiscriminately <laughs> Right? Yeah. You know? It drives me nuts. Top end S's. Oh my else. God. Nobody's actually heard 16K 
in like 30 years. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, they've, they've heard it. Not they've heard it in the past. <laughs> no, yeah. but, but like, this is why I try to, anytime mm. I feel myself being offended by somebody's mm. creative sensibility, when a record gets to me, I've been down the path of trying to undo their mm -hmm. flaws. Interesting. I've okay. been down the path of trying to mitigate yeah. in what my mind is their functional failure. And maintain mm -hmm. what is their brilliance. Mm -hmm. And it's not fun. It's not fun. You know what I mean? It's not fun to try to convince people who are jazzed about something that... that it's not fun to undo, you're saying, or try and fix. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's working. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm... If it's moving culture. So, so for the same, same reason... Page, like, to I'm, me, you know. to me, I can't even... I can't remember the last time I've felt offended by something sonically. And maybe I just have a different approach to it. But like to me, it's always just like, oh, that's I can different. try that in a small town. That's not even a good song. <laughs> okay, but you're talking at a song level. No, it's not even well written. It's like <laughs> no, a bad, it's like it, a, it's like an objectively yeah, but, but I'm bad talking, song. I'm like the politics about, around it are hilarious to me because it's not even a song that I would ever expect a major artist to cut. It's such a bad song. It's yeah, yeah, not yeah. even clever. Okay. I'm talking like Sonic's level, like 16 K is way too bright. I'm offended. Like I've never felt that way, but yes, to your point, <laughs> try that in a small town. I mean, it's, it's not even good. It's, it's, it's not even average. You know how many, it's, do you know how yeah, many it's, jingoistic, it's very lame, bad. As a song, embarrassing it's very songs have existed and they were still from a craft standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like redeemable. Do you remember um what was it? God, it can't was, wait to it see was, where we're gonna go with this. It was right after September eleventh. Um I can't I, I don't uh, like what is it? I'll Toby put Keith? a boot in your yes. ass. It's yes. the American way. <laughs> My parents said that? shit's catchy. I'm pretty sure it's Toby Keith or something. Yeah. 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 And you know what? <laughs> Jingoistic as fuck. Plenty of criticism to be leveled at it, but like <laughs> Yeah, it was it was still a song. Try that in a it, the phrasing yeah. sucks, the rhyme scheme sucks, yeah. the melody sucks. It's not a good like the like. Ugh, but, if we're gonna get angry about but, something, it should but, at least be like well executed. This is a fun. Why get angry about something but, that sucks? Okay, that's fine. But does it speak to a time when the statement that it makes is more important than? the quality quote unquote of it right because it made a pretty big statement which i mean it wasn't yeah. even that big of a statement i guess as much no. as it got blown. it was it was a rehashing of a statement that you know magistan has been you know what? actually we should cut that that was probably cancelable that i just said <laughs> magistan or y'all qaeda there's no cuts but, on this but, podcast but, but um no like my point being, though, I think it might speak to more of a time. Like, I look at the, uh, what's the dude's name who came up? The the Richmond, rich man in North or whatever. That's another example. Anthony Olivia, like, but, 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 but it's like, it's not even a good song. But my point being, like, I think we're at a time where there's so much more to be said about making a statement than there is to be about making, like, yes. quote unquote, yes. quality art, I think, yes. which is. And that's a problem, but, too. But. That I'll get angry but, about. That I get offended okay, by. Okay, but hear me out on this. I feel like a core part of art's purpose is to make a statement and to, like, like it's punk rock. Like, that's the whole point. Like, punk rock is kind of garbage, really. Like, it's loud stuff. But, like, I would argue like it's, that it it's was... making, like, it's, it's contrary. It's making a statement. It's putting its fist up. It's putting its yeah. foot on the ground. Like, it's, it's communicating conversationally something so here's my pushback on that though and i think this is a larger critique on culture and mm -hmm. our consumption of okay. of whatever form of art if all of it can even be called art anymore i'll be very generous Ooh, and just say it's okay. all art but i'm not talking mm. about music i'm talking about like content okay. versus art okay so but but okay. go ahead but i think we are living through a time right now where it is more important to land a hit on a battleship than it is to make people feel anything. 
Like it seems like the benchmark mm. for what makes something, whether it be viral or culturally relevant or whatever, has nothing to do with the creative merit, with the um, technical execution merit. It's purely about can you say something? They're like ruffle some feathers. Yeah, basically. it's yeah. all. All it is is like it's like we've gone from. Olympic Greco-Roman wrestling to it's all professional wrestling. It's all performative. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like Ooh, that's very like interesting. when you can drive a song up the charts because it is mm. sort of a prefab campaign song. It's sort of a um, that fits an existing yeah. ideology mm. as opposed to saying something that speaks truth and maybe in a way that is sonically uncomfortable, like the way punk rock was right. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was grotesque, but it matched an emotion. Right. And there's a reason why here in 2023, you and me are referencing punk rock. Okay. I don't think anybody's going to reference anything from this era because it's also disposable. It's just memes. Right. Like those songs are memes. I'm gonna push back a little bit on this. Please. It's gonna be weird. I'm it's ready gonna be for political. It. And I'm I don't ready wanna for do it. it. But like No, I'm fine with it. Let's do it. But do you think you're only saying that because the two examples we used of like Anthony mm-hmm. Olivia and whatever and um uh Child in Small Town or because push- they run contrary to my politics? I, no no no. I'm not bringing your politics into it by any means, but I'm just saying, do you think it's because they were on that side, let's say, that is like 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 put something else into it. Maybe. I don't know. You get what I'm saying? No, like, okay. I think we're using two examples that, yeah. Like, cause when you bring punk rock into it, it brings maybe a contrary thing into it. I think that's like coming from a different side that like, so maybe more people resonate with or makes more sense. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that you would agree with the statement to quote unquote being made. Sure. Sure. So if we take ourselves into a ideological vacuum, Hmm. An anechoic chamber. That's what of, I'm trying to do of, here. I'm trying to say like of a middle ideology. ground. Of, yeah. Not even middle ground, sure. just an absence of ground. Yeah, gotcha. If the if the intended message and sentiment does not even factor into the conversation. Yes. What I'm saying is that intention behind the creation of these works is So you question the intention. A hundred percent. You question Yes, I think these I are I think these are Jason Aldean's intention, but yeah. I don't know that I'd question Anthony Olivia's. And, and you know what? I don't know enough about Oliver Anthony Oliver. I don't even know uh, the name. saying the wrong thing. You know, yeah. I don't know enough about him to make any kind of of um analysis of his intentions. Um it's less about the artist and it's more about what the audience does with it. Oh, is that fair though? Is that fair to the artist? I, mean, I, I don't think it's pointed at the artist. I think it's more a criticism of culture. I think it's oh, more a okay. criticism of the masses. Mm, I think, I think like, yeah, like I have to be conscious of the fact that this is maybe a dangerous thing to say in Nashville, but I think one of the things that's made mainstream country music as successful on a commercial level as it's been historically, mm-hmm. is that it functionally acts as a customer service business more Ooh. than any other genre. A customer service business. A hundred percent. Tell me more. And I think that Explain the towering that. stars of modern radio country, and, and I mean, go back into the nineties. Sure. Right. It's been this way for a while. It, yeah. That's right. These are, these are people that are business people. And they're incredible mm. at it. Like, I'm not even saying that as a negative thing. Like yeah. the fact that the average um, generational country star owns bars, <laughs> lifestyle <laughs> yeah. brands, yeah. I mean, mail that's... order tequila brands. Like these are, these are amazing they, they examples of capitalists. Like they're not Justin Bieber, but they're worse than Justin Bieber type thing. Basically. Uh, I'm like, not even making a judgment. Like just, this is purely from a, gotcha. what Keep defines yeah. the, the business format. What is the revenue driver? What is the functional role of that brand? And I think that modern, popular country, radio country, even the good stuff, 
the towering stars are entrepreneurs more than they are musicians. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not criticizing that component. Yeah. What I'm critical of is the cynicism that try that in a small town was a straight up cynical cash grab. Yeah. They knew exactly what they were doing. And what offends me is not that part, even though I find it offensive. What offends me is that they didn't even bother to get a well written version of that yeah. cash grab. It is so below average from every musical metric that offends me it's it's yeah i mean i think put a boot in your ass it's the american <laughs> way that is a fucking smash that even if you throwback, hate the sentiment yeah. that is a song that's funny try that in a, it, it's just so bad anyway that was I mean, the longest over, rant it blew ever. over quick but yeah and there'll be another but, but the Oliver Anthony thing is is a little more, I think, nuanced, and it's it's yeah. interesting because you know he actually disappointed quite a few of the people that jammed his thing up the the charts because he's not actually as politically aligned, to my knowledge, with with the audience that seemed to respond the most aggressively to it uh, in a positive way, in an affirm affirmative I way. I don't, I don't get into politics, and I don't know, and I didn't keep up, but I just I, yeah, I looked that's at the Anthony not this is, Oliver but. thing like a little bit when it popped up, because I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I like listened like one or two of like the podcast that he had done. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty obvious that like, to me at least, and maybe it's a game, but like that he was just kind of like a random dude who was making some tunes that like, was like, oh, I didn't know this was going to happen. Like totally random type. And then um, some cynical marketers, whoever they were. Sure. Latched I mean, onto and, then it, it. and then it goes out of, like in, line, which is what way, he, he spoke to a little bit too, right. I think, where it was like, I don't even know what people are saying about, like, I don't control the narrative. Like, I'm just a guy who did a thing and it blew up somehow. You and know? It's, it's just like that, that below average action movie about the guy that saves the kids from human trafficking that like cranked up the box office numbers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, but it was like, it was a cash grab. Like there was, this, it was this whole marketing thing around like yeah. now your responsibility if you were emotionally affected by this movie is to yeah. buy 10 tickets and give them to people because, because it's it's so cynical and so to, the whole thing is broke so, so yeah. to bring it like so far back I, and I'm, I, I, we're right now we're talking about stuff that I know is like it lives in the more like right leaning American centric sort of concept of of this thing and it's easy for me to be critical of it because sure. I obviously fall on a different side of the spectrum than that. Not super far, but yeah, you know, I'm left of center, but so, sure. so I don't want to like unfairly beat up on just sort of conservative driven media, but this is the same thing that's happening with TikTok. It's the same thing that's, that's driving below average art because it's about, it's about who you're going to piss off. And who's going to feel good about those people being pissed off? That's how we're building audiences now. It's like, can't Who we all just watch? Off? Can't yeah, we all just watch sports? Yeah, but I mean, and I be think pissed it's, that but way. I think it's just now seeping the music industry. I mean, media and whatnot's been doing that forever with sure. fear mong, like fear, Cable news. like this, that, sure. like. It's just the music industry is just now picking up on like, oh, we could use these tactics to do the thing of like, I don't know, and it, and like, I think it just goes back to maybe where we were before but like a problem with dopamine and a problem with like our attention spans and our problem with like values in general like it's it's it it's all connected in some really crazy bizarre not yeah. healthy sort of way yeah i mean the same way we we know that the algorithms that drive um recommendations for the next youtube video to watch yeah oh yeah well like they, like they know that yeah. outrage is the single best way to drive engagement yeah. and what i feel like and this kind of goes again i'm jumping way back to go more like high level this is my greatest fear is that we've created such a potent delivery system <laughs> for delivery our system. most wow. baseline mm. reactive tendencies wow that we might have invented something that we can't resist. That kills us. That kills us. Yeah. 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 Uh, spiritually. People are, people are worried about Emotionally. AI. Yeah, but if it kills you in that way, that kills you as a human, I think. Right. right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. 
it's like it's that right there. Idiocracy wasn't as scary as what we're looking at right now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's 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 not even about dumbing people down. It's about taking like I'm not worried about people of of you know lesser intellect being the problem. It's more <laughs> the fact that you meet legitimately brilliant thoughtful people capable demonstratively of critical thinking Mm -hmm. who have had the resources to grow their minds Mm -hmm. and even they aren't strong enough to overcome this machine that's been built to just push the the animal buttons in us but even they aren't yeah i mean that's what you're saying but even they aren't when they engage in putting content on the internet above the machine that feeds and creates this trap. Right. Yeah. You know, like there's people that I think are geniuses and I respect, but their stuff on the internet could be debated and becomes like sour and, and divides and does the thing and like defeats the purpose of what they were trying to spread to begin with. So I think, yeah, it's an algorithm that might be Problem more than anything that that might be too damn irresistible mm. for even those of us <laughs> aware of it. Well, like we're having a conversation no, about it right now, but you know, before I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna be scrolling my ass off. Oh, I can't wait to get out of here and look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point being is, um, I don't think we're even aware of it sometimes. Right, I think it sure. seeps in in the most innocent of ways. One hundred percent, because we're surrounded by it in every aspect. Right, like I say this all the time. I bought a scale like a couple months ago. I had to sign up with my email address and give my like. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you had to download an app to lift the hammer. Connected. That's what I'm saying. Like, even if you're unplugged from anything in the world, like you are still. A pr- like a part of this beast that you can't escape. And I think it's coming for all of us in some crazy way that whether you realize it or not is, is a problem, you know? And that's, I guess that's my biggest fear <laughs> is, you know, like, like I don't, and I don't know what you do about it. Cause like well, you either just live entirely off the grid with no address and no license and no, like, or you just have to be a part of this beast. Well, so here's the, and I, we've been spending so much of the conversation talking yeah. about the fear component of it. Sure. And, and anybody that well, knows me yeah. knows that that's not what drives me. Like we, we lasered into that because I think sure. I'm really grateful to be able to have a conversation where we can air that out. But more than I'm afraid. Um, I'm optimistic for one, one kind of just broad reason is that throughout our entire history, humans have always found a way to surprise ourselves. That's fair. That's fair. I was listening to a podcast earlier today. I can't remember what it, the speakers. Oh, I remember what it was. It was, um, they were talking about, um, these really wild changes that are coming at the FDA where they're getting ready to like hit us with a fire hose of new therapeutics that are built Mm -hmm. around psychedelics. Sure. Right. That like we are imminently going to have FDA approval on multiple compounds that we've treated as illicit drugs yeah, yeah. for generations. It's been coming for a while. Sure. But there was a quote, one of the doctors that was talking about it, it was one of the doctors at the um, John Hopkins psilocybin trial, like very learned person, not course, a hippie. Yeah. This is not Timothy Leary <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This is somebody tested, that is yeah. not taking these drugs, <laughs> but they are studying them. Anyway, and, and they made a comment, and I'm... I'm going to butcher this, but it was something about how like history happens at a pace that if you're counting the minutes, it feels like nothing happens for decades. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you have these watershed moments where things change and all of a sudden 
30 years of feeling like nothing happens is like upended in three weeks. Yeah. Right. And for the same reason that I'm not interested in arguing with somebody that has a theory about aliens, because I don't know. Yeah. I'm also not interested in prognosticating about the inevitable doom of us because we've invented TikTok. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I do believe in the fundamental goodness and the survival instinct of humans to, yeah. to innovate our way, whether it be through technology or spirituality or whatever. I, I do believe will eventually reject something poisonous. I don't want to say Does that make right. sense? No, no, no. I agree with you and I don't I want to say on record too that like I know we focus maybe in a negative aspect of some of those things but like I also think the algorithm, quote unquote, and AI and whatever technology things I think have been this is maybe a bold statement, but I think I've been net positive for things. Oh yeah. In like the grand scheme, you know, like I think totally, I think, yes, we could sit here and talk about how it's hurts us and kills us and is bad for our mental state and like sitting on your phone all day and comparison games and, and like using narratives to control people. And like all that is inherently bad on a piece of paper, but on a broad scale, but you know how many people's lives have probably been saved because they saw Correct. a TikTok that said, hey, if you're experiencing this symptom, you yeah. might want to go to your doctor. Yeah. And or, they found out early enough that they had something that could be cured instead of dying from it. Or just the idea of connection it. of people, of right. like-minded individuals, of of just the idea that like nation states are changing now to find people who you feel closer with to create community and move like in that aspect. And like, there's, there's so many net positives to it that I... I would err on the side that I think it has great negatives, but I think it's given so much more opportunity to people who never had opportunity before that I think it's totally. a net positive overall. Yes. It comes with great pitfalls like anything, I think. So here's my question but, to you. Go ahead. Do you feel like, because I agree with what you yeah. just said entirely. I think... My curiosity and my concern on a selfish level mm. is, do you think in our lifetime, we will reach that like pendulum swinging back to a place of balance again? Or do you think the time that we're living through oh, is just going to be the fucking garbage heap of all of the... Um, unintentional consequences of things yes. that will ultimately be a net positive that we both agree on. But do you think in our lifetime, we will actually get to experience us like rounding that corner or, lifetime, or is this going to so, be a long slog that hopefully our kids <laughs> will get a taste of our lifetime. So say another 50, 60 years, um, I think is going to be not good. Okay. I think it's going to be because we're going to swing too far one way and then it has to swing back too far the other way before you get the, the, the middle ground. Sure. And I think we're still on the uptick of one side of the swing. And I think <laughs> the other side of the swing is going to be painful as well before it gets to a point where it's like comfortable of like, oh, we harnessed these things in yeah. a way that like isn't. My gut is to agree with you on that. Yeah, like my my gut, and I'm not a pessimist. Yeah, I but I but I do think I'm a reasonable, realistic person, and and my gut is that this is going to be harder for longer. But I just see how quick it came up. I mean, I, in this wasn't even. I mean, I've only been out of high school for what like ten years now, and none of this was even like a thing. Like Instagram was like just starting to become a thing. You know, Dude, I like, had a Nokia in high school. That's what I, mean. I played like, I, Snake on my phone. That was the closest thing I had to doom scrolling back like, then. Until like senior year, junior or senior year for me, I had a flip phone, and then it was like when I got an iPhone, it was like whoa. Yeah. You know, like it was. Yeah. It was not. Not everybody had them. You know. Well, you know what? I just realized there's kind of an interesting parallel between what we're talking about now and what we started out talking about. The idea of like humanity's wiring being 
primarily designed to do these sort of like simple functional survival roles, mm-hmm. right? Even though we're talking about something that that is so much more granular and advanced and complicated in terms of our current yeah. civilization, maybe the same thing that allowed a couple of people tens of thousands of years ago to sit around a fire despite all of the threats that they faced to their existence on a daily basis yeah. and could still find a way to laugh and smile and, yeah. and all of that, you know, like if we are in a time of, of um, intrinsic challenge culturally and, and as a species, maybe, and this is the optimist to me, maybe that's where the heart of humanity kind of like finds itself sure. again. Like we may not be worried about running from from a, a, yeah. a vicious predator, but we are definitely being pursued by a predator of the mind. Yeah. And in terms of of the social media stuff and, or the polarization or yeah. whatever, like I don't know. Again, this is what I have to hold on I mean, to. I think, I think but, what you're saying or what I would agree with you on in that is that outside of let's say the spiritual side of it, I think the point of what your thing was, I missed the point. I would define that down to like the point is like community and like connection fully of other people. Right. And like, like, yeah, there's bad things or good things or hard things or crazy things or like whatever that may be. But it's the, like you said, getting around the fire, you know, after it all or struggling together or, or not struggling together. Like, so do what do you do? What is your version of, after a day of surviving <laughs> seriously like okay, w- what is yeah. what is your version of that restful quiet place where you can kind of be like the most pure version mm. of a human that's alive and not just Josh Bonanno the mixer yeah or sure. the podcast host or <laughs> um yeah pop. Whatever other archetypes that we like wake up in the morning, put on our boots yeah. and go be like, what is your sitting around the fire? Um, I'll give two answers because I've lived through them both and they are still two animals in my brain that fight. Uh, the one, which is unhealthy, which has been a thing that I've do for years, but it's, it's shutting it off. Right. It's, it's the, it's the cool. We did the thing. We survived today shut the, let's drink, let's do the thing. Let's, let's numb. Let's just fall asleep. Let's scroll. Let's, you know what I mean? Like, let's just feed those inhibitions and let's pass out. Um, which, you know, worked for a while and was fun and did the thing. But I mean, now it looks a lot more like that community. Like I'm married now. Like I have a wife. I love just the simple mundane, like cooking dinner, like, like just, Oh, what an interesting parallel, though. <laughs> right? Oh, God, why? Making food. Sure. Yeah. Feeding yourself yeah, well, or it's, feeding it's, your family. Well, it's the mundane. Like, like, that's, to me, there's art in the mundane. Like, there's art in the tiny little non-quote-unquote essential things that we do in life. You know, it's the breathing exercise of, like, focus on the breath. Yeah. Like, because that's what I think grounds you in such a important human mystic level way whereas anything other than that is sort of just a dopamine scroll or like drink or smoke or whatever yeah. it may be yeah. is 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 shutting you off from that humanistic level yeah um so i mean that to me is my quote unquote escape or relaxation or whatever that is after you know fighting for survival which like you said i mean is barely fighting for survival so the idea that i feel that way sometimes is also laughable like josh you you yeah. pushed a couple you stared at the screen and pushed a couple buttons today yeah. like it was it was fine you're not you don't need to go numb your brain out yeah yeah like you really didn't you didn't fight off a bear like you're okay see and you know what like it gives me a lot of hope every time i meet somebody that is able to simultaneously 
remain ambitious and connected mm-hmm. and not just rebel against the world. Like this is getting back to what I'm talking about. Like you said, like you, yeah. we can go off the grid, right? Yeah. Functionally, technically, there's mm. something stopping us from going off the, the grid. The idea of rebelling in that is interesting. I've never thought about it that way, but it's, it's well, I don't rebelling. think it's rebelling. No? I, I don't. No, I think it's, I think it's opting out. Mm. And, okay. and, and listen, no judgment. If there's somebody rebelling in that by opting out, you're, you're rebelling, rebelling on, on some that. sort of like, like esoteric level. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But I think the real rebellion is finding ways to root ourselves in authentic human experiences yeah. while still remaining engaged with a world that whether we live in the middle of nowhere, completely cut off from society mm-hmm. or not, is happening all around us. Yeah. And if you have any kind of altruistic ambition, then opting out is not an option. Even if the best you can do is serve as an example to one other person in your life, yeah. remaining connected, even if you are just shaking your fist at things, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think is, is, is virtuous. Is and, important. And, and I when think, I meet yeah. people that are able to square that mm. of remaining engaged, remaining ambitious, remaining inspired mm. and inspired. Yeah. Also aware enough of this uniquely challenging time for the spirit of humanity. <laughs> and then, and then still find something to laugh about. You know what I mean? It's balance in all of it. I think. Yeah. But, but, I feel like an elitist asshole saying I don't meet many people like that. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm not, I'm not saying I do either, but, um, but, but I, but I'm I, don't encouraged. Of, I don't meet a lot of people who are balanced. I don't think well, I'm certainly not balanced. I'm in balance as hell. I don't think any of us are, but I think some of us are like closer to the line than, than others. Uh, the only thing I'm willing to take. And any, I, th- I think you're closer than you give yourself well, credit for. But. I think the only thing I'm willing to like earnestly take credit for and, and stand behind is I may not have any idea what the hell I'm doing in terms of finding that balance or figuring out what the point is. Yeah. Right. But I am aware of the fact that it is a question and I want to keep pursuing it. I mean, awareness in my experience and perspective in life is like 85 to 90%. Like, I think the idea that I I just think so many people lack awareness, which is maybe just a wildly pretentious thing to say or put on people. But I don't know. In my experience, there feels like that's a disconnect sometimes. Like, I think awareness is just a large part of it. Yeah. And when you have that and can see yourself from that perspective, it it's, you're closer than you realize, you know? <laughs> but it's crazy. It's, it's a heavy, it's a heavy project. You know what uh, I mean? Awareness? Yeah. yeah. I mean, having awareness is like. It is heavy to be self-aware. Oh, because. And I do not blame people at all. No. For looking away. <laughs> I, and there are probably a lot of people that are a lot happier on Ooh. a on a baseline That's level because they kind of just they're in their own thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. That's like fair. no wonder the whole like main character syndrome <laughs> thing has become the NPC sort of main character. Yeah. Sure. Is that like the dichotomy of it? God, I don't know that there's a more powerful drug than <laughs> the delusion of um life being only what you <clears throat> experience and that knowledge of the larger world but but there's a level where that's painful but there's a level where there is that fight they would fight you back on that of being like well it's all i can experience and it's all i have so that's all that is true and and just like my feeling about people who believe in aliens in a in a different way than (laughs) me like i don't have any interest in telling those people they're wrong yeah if somebody is 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 legitimately happy by setting up a tripod in the yeah. middle of a busy shopping center and doing a dance <laughs> that if I'm in that shot, you will see me rolling my eyes <laughs> going, what the hell is this person doing? This is <laughs> the main characters. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I'm the one sitting there complaining and they're the one dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, so who's, who's, who's really missing the point Yeah. in that situation? Most wow. likely me. Hmm. 
So yeah, so maybe like the mm. point is that not every equation needs a solve. Mm. That not every problem is a problem. That mm. living our lives is a fluid experience and maybe trying to make it all make sense and square is like the biggest fallacy of them all. Mm. And wow. you know, yeah. so what am I afraid of? I'm afraid of not knowing what I really think is the right answer to that question and uh, wow. not being able to be as fulfilled and happy as I have the capability to be in mm. this life. Ooh. And I say that as somebody who is generally quite happy. Hmm. Kyle, Josh, this is like an incredible place to just like end this, but is there anything else you want to say to the people? Um, it feels very profound. This has been a fun conversation. Yeah. I got a lot Th to take away from this. This was like not at all what I thought we were going to talk about. I thought we were, were going to talk about, I thought we were going to like, like compare our mix buses, but um, um, we did this, that before we got on the thing. That's, that's true. Um, Here's mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, saved the people from having to know. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, he puts uh, Soothe on the mix bus guys. That's I do. Fine. I put Soothe on the mix bus. If you were editing a vocal right now and watching this, um, uh, please separate your S's, T's and breaths before you run Melodyne. <laughs> that is so much more work um, than you're ever going to do. <laughs> and, uh, don't limit the shit out of your roughs because then I have to make it louder than yours. And that's not always a good thing. Wow. See, that's summed everything up we could have said in those two minutes anyway. Yeah. But if you like Over. loud, be loud, whatever. Yeah. That's all there is to music. Everything else is otherworldly like we talked about yeah kyle josh thanks for doing this man this thank you man a lot of fun yeah this is great i've i'm gonna have an existential crisis after this. <laughs> <laughs> very good very till good. next time till next time peace peace